Is there still a people of God in the city of Pittsburgh? Amen. Trying to be attentive. Try is the key word. We have we have the preachers act that we have started utilizing, and hopefully it'll work today. Amen. Amen. If not, it's already in my spirit. We'll just go from there. Hallelujah. We want to give honor to all of you, God's people. Thank you for coming out today. I mean, it's what we need to do. Amen. Amen. But it does my heart good to see like. Pastor Lewis said, and Pastor Law could, could probably end up with me. It's good to see us together. The psalmist knew what he was talking about, I guess, when he said, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to not come together, but to dwell together. And don't just dwell together, but to do it in unity. Praise the Lord. The Word of God goes on and gives description about it, said it's like the world. That the man of God in the scripture received that it was poured on his head and it flowed down his beard and on down to his garments. Praise the Lord, somebody. Uh, I'm talking about us. And then the word of God is beautiful. It says, because there the Lord commanded the blessing. I want you to know it's not a locality physically, it's a state of mind and of spirit. That's where God is commanding his blessing. Praise the Lord, somebody. Anybody come to be blessed? We just want to thank God for all the pastors, wives, amen, in the house today, amen. I want to thank God for you, thank God for you. Where's Mother Lewis? Y'all can never find her. Okay, God bless Mother Lewis too. Amen. <laughs> well, thank God for, amen, uh, our missionary president from the state of Pennsylvania, Mother Linda Greenwich. God bless you, man. <laughs> and we'd be remiss if we didn't mention my good friend and my laughing partner, amen, Sister Paulette Davis. Amen. <laughs> yeah, God bless you. She's our state superintendent for the Sunday school. Department and they are dedicated people. We thank God for Mother Lois. We're just saying praise the Lord for you. Thank God for you so much. We love you and are always praying for you. I want to take a moment to say thank God for my wife, 33 and counseling years. Amen. My friend, my wife, my confidant, she's my all in all. Amen. Other than Jesus, you can't save me. Praise the Lord. Thank God for our eldest child. He met my daughter, Denisha, who's also a Pittsburgh resident. Right there, see that other side of the room? Raise your hand, Denisha. That's my hand. There you go, my baby. There you go. Taller than her dad, but she's still my baby. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for everyone in their proper place. Amen. And we are uh, so grateful to see Ellen uh, Walker. God bless you, sir. Amen. Thank God for my dear sister. Bless you and your brother in the back through the camera news. God bless you. Just all of them. Just, you know, you start messing up, you start making names. Praise the Lord. So every one of y'all, God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And we thank God for you so much. What we want to do is, is just get past you. Pass the greetings and, and get to ministry. Is that okay? Uh, so the Lord dropped it in our spirit that we should press our way to Pittsburgh. Just to give y'all a little bit of insight. So I guess now it's two Sundays ago uh, that we had a beautiful pastoral anniversary. And I'm going to thank y'all for coming. God bless. I said, when well, folks come out the mountain and say, God bless you, that means something. Praise the Lord. Oh, because you're going over the highways and byways, danger seen and unseen. Thank you. So God bless you. I'm glad to see you guys this morning. God bless you. Uh, just uh, felt so good. The spirit was beautiful. I believe people were delivered. How many of y'all there felt that, that God did his work on us on, on those two days of the meeting? But see, I, I know God didn't get tired. So God is still intending to, to bless to restore, to renew his people. Anybody 
Anybody interested in what I just shared with you? I told somebody the other day, I said, I said, I'm a hope dealer. And they could identify with me because they were from the streets. Praise the Lord. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Just that same way. You never did none of that. Praise the Lord. I told you. But I, I'm still a dealer. I'm just a hope dealer. I deal in hope. I, the, the way the Lord has equipped me, I go in places where, where it seems like the devil has won. Praise the Lord, somebody. Where people have all but given up and, and, and dropped a word of hope and inspired word of hope. And, and by these words, praise the Lord, uh, somebody has the audacity to believe that God can. Anybody have the audacity of faith this morning? The audacity of faith. It don't make no sense. I disqualified myself a long time ago. My time done came and went. But look at God still calling my name. Come on, somebody. Let's get to the place that you can really receive from God. Holy Spirit will receive from the Lord. But if we open up, like the scripture says, the Bible says, lift up your head, oh, you gates. Lift up your head to everlasting doors. And the King. What king, the king of glory, shall come in? Who is this king of glory? The Lord God, strong and mighty. Anybody want to have that blessing on this morning? Please, in Jesus' name, let's receive our blessing. Hallelujah. You know, I was trying to really get here and uh, didn't feel, I'm sure some of y'all preachers here can understand that you get to a place where you want to get it on. Amen. You want to get in the fight. You want to do what you got to do. And I couldn't, I couldn't even drink Starbucks right this morning, Brother George. Praise the Lord. <laughs> That's her little joke. Praise the Lord. Couldn't even get it in. And I was like, nah, I just got to go on. Amen. Got to go on. Uh, because I feel that there's a word from the Lord for God's people. So I'm just going to ask you, I'm, I'm, for those who came for a real deep and uh, very, uh, I don't know what other adjectives you want to put on it, uh, somebody who's really stuck up, maybe some other time you'll get another preacher like that. What you see is what you get. And I hope that's enough. I hope that's enough because I know that I've been called to be effective, not to, not to be impressive. I've been called to be effective, not impressive. I don't care if I impress you. I, I, I care that the Lord impresses himself upon you. I care that I'm effective in doing my job so that so God's people can receive. Amen. Because Isaiah talked about it in a prophetic manner and said, those who sat in darkness, huh? They saw a great Night. Praise the Lord, somebody. And on the day, I just come to let you know that, that I believe that we can see better light than we've been seeing. Anybody know what you think? We can be disappointed in ourselves. We can be disappointed in others. We can start pointing the finger. But all I know is that my relationship with God is personal. I, I have to give an account to the Lord for what I did or what I didn't do. Come on, somebody. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. I have to give an account. The word of God says that every man shall give an account of the deeds that are done in his body. Praise the Lord. I don't gotta talk about what this one did or that one did. I gotta talk about what, what did I do. I'm asking y'all to pray for me. Did y'all do that? Let's bow our heads and let us pray together. Father, it's in the wonders. In almighty name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus, that we want to thank you for your word. Your word gives us hope. Your word gives us encouragement. And Lord God gives us direction so that we might know how to go forth. Today, Lord, I ask that you would work a miracle. I realize that even while we're praying that there are demon spirits trying to keep your people from hearing your word effectively. I realize, Lord God, that the naughtiness and nastiness, the filthiness of our flesh would keep us from hearing your word and having chains come forth, oh God. But in the name of Jesus, we rebuke every foul spirit. We rebuke every proud spirit. We rebuke anything that is not like you and certainly not of you. And ask you, oh God, have your way. Speak through me whatever it is that needs to be spoken and not a word outside. 
We'll be careful to give your name the glory. Bless us and we shall be blessed. We pray it in Jesus' name. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Again, we thank God for all things. We honor our church that have blessed us to be away this weekend. Uh, they sent us on a little trip to the Poconos Mountains. And that was nice. The only thing was that that would have been better for me when I was in my 30s. <laughs> I'm not complaining. I took my vacation. Hallelujah. But uh, so we just said thank God for our church. That's the way of saying thank God for our, the ministry we have in, in the Harrisburg area and the greater central Pennsylvania area. And I claim y'all. Is that all right? <laughs> I claim y'all. Amen. Nothing you can do about it. Praise the Lord. You can say no, but I, I still claim you. Praise God. Because y'all are my brethren, and I care deeply about everybody that is here. The word that the Lord gave us on today, amen, uh, for the church would be a simple one-word message. The, the title of the message is one. Amen. D do me a favor. Look at somebody and say, we're one. And y'all just said it because I told you, say, you didn't mean a lick of what you said. Tell somebody and say, we're one. We're one. We're one. Up in this pulpit, we're one. Out there, all the way to the back door, the brothers holding the guard position at the back door. We're one. Thank God Almighty. We're one. Mothers in Zion, men and women of God, children and youth, we are one. When God delivered the children of Egypt, they met out of Egypt, rather, children of Israel out of Egypt, He delivered them all because they were one people. Praise the Lord, somebody. Young and old. Praise God, someone. Some that were clergymen and some that were not. Come to let somebody know that when the Lord delivers, praise the Lord, He delivers because He is God. Hallelujah. It's not based on how good you're doing, it's not a performance. We always had a witness. I'm already starting to preach. Amen. It's not a performance review. This is how good you've been doing. So you qualify to be a uh, my child. Uh, you, you've been you've been doing this and that. You've been following, amen, the, the order set by your church and this, that, and the other. All I know is that the word of God says that whosoever believed in him would not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. I don't know about you, but that's the only reason I got saved. I didn't get saved so I could be in front of y'all wearing a mic and speak. I got saved because I didn't want to go to the lake of fire. I got saved because I didn't want to. I didn't want to miss eternity without my God. Amen. I wanted to be with God in eternity. Come on, somebody! Hallelujah! That's why I got saved. And when I reviewed, Amen. What I had. And that's what the Lord was offering me. I said, well, he has is so much better. Praise God, anybody. So much better. I thought I was this. I thought I was that. I, I, you know, when you're young, you can do anything. You can conquer the world. You can run. You can praise God. But you, you live a little bit. Praise, for some of you young people, that's your whole message. Keep on living. Keep on living. Amen. And you will see, amen, that how important it is to have a good and right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Am I helping anybody so far? So you don't think I don't have no scripture. I want to just talk to you a little bit about what the Lord gave us. Because I believe the Lord wants to do some healing in the body of Christ in this part of his vineyard. Does that sound acceptable to you, my brothers and sisters? That we should be made whole. That we should be straight. Nobody won't answer me, okay? I'll preach the lights. I'm okay with that. Praise the Lord. The Lord wants to make us whole. The Lord wants to bless us. The Lord wants to go ahead on and finish some of the stuff that He started in us. Why? Because His Word says, Amen. He that began a good work in us shall perform it. How long, saying, Till the day of Jesus Christ. That means that, like the Apostle Paul said, it's not like I'm already perfect. The Lord is 
was going to do it, I started looking at the word one in the Bible. In the NIV version of the Bible, it's uh, about 2,697 times. In the King James Version, it's 1,600 and something times that the word one is found in the scriptures. I thought that was important and interesting, and I looked for some, some places that, that God expressed, amen, the, the, the need for us to know that he's one. And you know, we as oneness, believe me, are there any oneness people in here? Yeah, yeah that's so good. Has anybody got the baptism in that name, Jesus Christ? Anybody here been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost? Yes. Amen. The real Holy Ghost. Yes. The Holy Ghost that lets you speak in tongues and live right. Come on, someone. Yes. The Holy Ghost that lets you speak in tongues and resist temptation victoriously. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. So I, I thought about the scriptures and, and the Lord had me to remember a scripture that we used to quote in our, uh, our Friday night Bible studies. And it would be on the book of Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. I'll read it in your hearing. Uh, it's a common one. Amen. Verses four and five say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Come on, somebody. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Praise the Lord, somebody. This is a commandment that he gave to his people way back, amen, before the new covenant that we're in. Praise the Lord. He wanted them to know, listen, I'm one God. I'm the true God. There's no, come on, I'm, I'm preaching to myself. There's no God beside our God. Come on, somebody. I know the song says there's no God like our God, but there's no God beside our God. He's God alone. Praise the Lord, somebody. Before the demigods or the little gods existed, here was God standing, amen, before time was created so that we could have a way to measure, amen, there was He wanted us to know that he's one. Amen. And, and, and I'm not the smartest man, amen, in, in, in the building, praise the Lord, by a long shot. Hallelujah. But something the Lord gave to me early on was that, that God is just one God. Praise the Lord. Just one, brother. Just one. Amen. And I have my people tell me, you know, there's, there's God the Father and there's God the Son and there's God the Holy Ghost. I said, okay, all right, I'm trying to work with you. But then I turned to the book of Revelation, Pastor Lewis, and, and, and John the Revelator said, and I saw him that sat on the throne. Come on, somebody. It wasn't them that sat on the throne. Does that would mean that God the Father was sitting on the throne? Amen. God the Son was sitting on his lap, and God the Holy Spirit was being held up like a baby. I know that's a demonic lie, and they ain't never going The one is God, you know we believe that, amen, you're right. But what I, I do want to speak about is knowing that our God is one, that there's no other. And just as the Apostle Paul spoke in the book of 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, he asked this question to believers, and y'all are believers, right? Yeah. 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 Whoever is not a believer, raise your hand. Yeah. Okay, good, I couldn't catch you. <laughs> Usually I'm a little meaner than that, Pastor, but I gotta behave. Praise the Lord. Whoever is a believer, raise your hand. Amen. And Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thank God. Amen. The Apostle Paul speaking to that early church in Corinth, speaking to a, a young and zealous body of believers, spoke to these people and he told them, listen, I want you all to get this together because you know you can have. The gifts of the Spirit. Come on, somebody. You can speak in tongues, shout, 
Amen. You know our culture likes to shout. Y'all give them the polite laugh. You know y'all shout. Some of y'all be shouting later on when the game goes on at 820. Am I right? Uh -huh. You be doing better than you in church. Come on! You better give God his due. The Corinthian church had a situation where they were full of the gifts that God had bestowed upon them, but they were also uh, a little bit too carnal. Come on, somebody. And, and I just need the church to hear me this morning because I'm treating y'all like family. Amen. We can be spirit-filled and still have a lot of flesh and things we got to cut out. So Paul had to write to them because they had taken up saying, well, I am a follower of Apollos. And others were saying, well, I am a Paul. And, 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 and giving their allegiance to, to Apollos and Paul like they had come on the cross for these people. So Paul, in the anointing of the Holy Ghost, said, is Christ divided? Now I've got to bring the question to the people of God today, is our God divided? The answer overwhelmingly truly is no. no. Our God is not divided. No, but I need you to understand that the way we conduct ourselves as believers, we make it appear as though our God were divided. Our God is the same today like he was yesterday, and the same he's going to be going forward even all the way to eternity. Our God is the same. He is one. He is not divided. Praise the Lord, somebody. And if we're going to really make an allegiance somewhere, we might as well make it on our one God. Can the church say amen? Amen. amen. Told you, I'm trying to be attentive. I'm trying to be attentive. Thank you, Jesus. In creation, when he created, the word of God says he's one. Y'all remember when we started creation? We could all probably quote the book of Genesis chapter, at least I hope so. Amen. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Amen. That, that's God. Nobody was with him. He created by himself, and he created it. Amen. Where, and I've got to ask the question to y'all, where did the heaven and the earth come from if there was no concrete material, praise the Lord, somebody, to, to make anything out of? Everything that God has made, it has come out Come on, I'm starting to talk to y'all. And the only thing that God has made has come out of God. Praise the Lord, somebody. It's come out of God. Hallelujah. He, he didn't have to go and borrow from somewhere else because there was nothing else. It was all in Him. Praise the Lord, somebody. I'm going to let you know that whatever you got is of God. If there's any good or perfect gift that's coming up and outside of you, it is of God. It's of God. So the word says that, that in the beginning he created the heaven and the earth, amen, showing that he was one. And then if you go on down to about, amen, the, the uh, second chapter and about the seventh verse, it starts talking about how we, we got here. The Bible says that the Lord God formed man. What did he make him out of, preacher? I'm glad I asked. He made him out of the dust of the ground. Amen, church. So I stood in the book that walked out. He made it out of the dust of the ground that came from the mind of God. Praise the Lord, somebody. Y'all ain't talking to me. Amen. But I just need for you to know, amen, that God created, and when he went to create, he drew it out of himself. He didn't have to go anywhere else to do that. He went on and said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Praise the Lord. That, that's why we have the mindset we do, we can be creative. We have a mindset to open God. God has placed that in us from himself. And God being as gracious as he was, he created the man out of the dust of the ground, but he wasn't finished because the, the dust just represented what we, were, what we dress up and pay so much attention to. Amen. For those of us who still have hair, we got to get it cut and shaped up. Amen. Come on, brothers, talk to me. For those that don't, you just buzz off what's left. Praise the Lord. But it's back in you ladies, y'all know, sisters. Praise the Lord. Amen. Got to go get your hair did, your feet did, the whole nine yards. Taking care of the, the, that most 
uh, uh, least part of us, the most uh, 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 non-enduring part of us, the, the flesh, praise the Lord. And, and, and the Bible says that when he made Adam, he, he had no life, but God wasn't done with him because he went to him and he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And at that point, when God imparted unto his creation from dust, amen, he, he became, the Bible says, a living soul. Can I hear an amen? He became a living soul after God had breathed on you. You can look like something. I'm talking to whoever don't doubt it yet. Amen. You can look like you're saved and sanctified and on your way to heaven. And I believe that you are. Praise the Lord. But let God breathe into you the breath of the Holy Ghost. Come on, church. Amen. We have become such that we stop talking about the need for the infilling and the enduring presence of God on the inside. God used to have the praise break and shout and give it all. Praise the Lord. But we need the Holy Ghost on the inside because the Word of God says that the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead well inside of us, He will also quicken our mortal body by that self and same spirit. God, not anybody that's hoping for the resurrection. I, I heard the songs of Zion today talking about that we'll be caught up to meet Him. Honey, I want you to know in order to be caught up to meet Him, you need to have the power of the Holy Ghost on the inside. Otherwise, when that hand comes out, you will not give up. You will not get up. Not to meet the Lord in the sky anyway, praise the Lord. He preached. I preached. We preach that you need the Spirit of Christ. The Bible says that what he did was he went on and he breathed into him the breath of life. And man became a living soul. God used that dust to make the man one. If the man wasn't divided. I, I'm, I'm going somewhere. I'm not taking a long train. Amen. But I, I'm, I'm going somewhere with it. Amen. He, when he made man, he made him complete. Can I get an amen? One of my favorite toys, and some of you pastors will probably be able to agree with me on this. When you get a new believer, when they first get saved, they believe God for anything. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Some of y'all saints know what I'm talking about. They're, they're the most zealous. We can do it. Let's go. Amen. Let's get it done. Praise the Lord. Remind you of Joshua. Amen. And his companion, when they came back and said, we are well able to overcome. But you know what? You got some folks that been in the way. They're not, they're not in the way. They're in the way. Praise the Lord. They're blocking the path. Amen. No, we're not able to do it right now. We better take a vote. We better strategize. We better go ahead on and pull up a PowerPoint about how we're going to do this. All I know is that if you have Jesus on the inside, the word of God says, amen, that we receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come on the inside. Power to overcome. Power to speak life for people are dying. I come to Pittsburgh not trying to be pretty, not trying to impress you, but I believe God. Amen. I'm going to let you all know right now. I stand in front of, I don't know how many people today, but one of our sisters here on today is agreeing and believing with me for her sight to be restored. Amen. And I believe in agreeing with her that her sight is not just her spiritual sight, but her natural sight is going to be restored. It's going to take some work. Amen. Because we're going to have to believe the way the word of God says. I wish I had a witness. But it's going to take some work because we're going to have to turn down the plate and say, God, do it for my sister the way you've done it for me so many times before. Lord, in the name of Jesus. I believe in God for that, Sister Davis. I believe in God for miracles. Amen. There's not going to come just to be, be glad and try to grab it. Praise the Lord, somebody. We're going to have to do what it takes according to the scripture. But I still, anybody still believe? I still believe. The odds may be great. Amen. The world may say we're done. We can't do nothing else. But all I know is, praise the Lord, that King Hezekiah, when he was told to wrap it up and get his house in order, you know what he did? He said, excuse me. And he turned his back, amen, to the people and his face to the wall. Why? Because you got to be able to come in and be one with your God in your hard time. I'm going to let somebody know. You've got to be able to shut the world out. Shut all the thoughts and lights out. And look to the one God who started the path and is able to keep you on the path and able to deliver you even when you're at death's door. 
I'm believing God for this. Maybe y'all have given up. I don't know. But I don't want to get excited about what God can do. I'm going to see what God can do. Anybody do I have a witness in here? I'm going to see if the boss of Paul said that I may know him and the power. And the power. I want to know. I want the theology. I want the doctrine. I want the scriptures. But, but most importantly, I want the power. Amen. What power, preacher? The power of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus in any circumstance. Ezekiel was challenged by God. Challenged by God in the spirit. Went down to the valley of dry bones and asked the question. You see these sun these bones? There's no life in them. They're scattered. It's been a dead deal for a long time. It's been over for a long time. But can these bones live again? And the man of God was cautious and didn't want to say yes, Lord, or not. I don't think so. But he said, Lord, you know. Thou knowest. Amen. And so God, knowing that he didn't want to overstep God, and God doesn't show you something, I come with a little secret. If God has shown you brokenness in somebody's life, are you listening to me? If God has shown you brokenness, brokenness in your own life, I come to let you know the Lord has shown you the dead bones because he wants to do something about it. Stop being discouraged and giving up. Stop being discouraged and walking away. Stop being discouraged and let the devil take you off on a wild little trip because you feel bad. Praise the Lord. God is talking to you about any circumstance. You need to say like the man of God said, Lord, you know. He told him, speak to these dry bones. Command them to come together. And he did as he was directed. And when there was death, saints of God, y'all remember? Amen. He was the one that got to see these bowls come together. No, there was no team waiting in the background. There was nobody hiding behind a rock. The, the, the word of God is enough to do what needs to be done just based on our faith. Boy, I got a witness on the day. I'm hoping I got two or three of y'all that will be a witness with this. All you have to do is believe according to the scriptures that God will uphold his heart. Why? Because God he is sure about what he has started. He is sure about what he can do. If he can save our souls, surely he can heal our bodies. We'll become, become complacent and, and to, to be quite frank and maybe a little discouraged. We become like the mother churches. We supposed to be the church with the name, the church with the authority, the church with the power. And there's people out there doing more than we are, not because they're the church of the name, or the church of authority, or the church of the power, but because they believe what the scripture says. They believe what the scripture says. And here, here we are, amen, with, and I'm not picking on nobody. We'll wear a, I'm a district elder. I'm a this and that. I mean, we'll wear pins from head to toe. Praise the Lord. But there's no power in them pins. I wish I had a witness. And we wear, I wear mine sometimes. I'm not picking. I know Pastor Long's wearing his, and they're beautiful. Praise the Lord. But, but there's power in the man, not in the pins. Come on, somebody. When God gave Adam his body. I want you to see what he did. He gave him the body, he gave him his life, and, and he gave him his soul. Man was complete. But somewhere along the line, amen, uh, uh, people messed up. The word of God says that even before they messed up, that God wanted to continue to expand Adam's capacity. And what he did for him was, he said, I see that Adam is like me. I didn't give him a book how to name these animals and all these birds and all this, that, and the other. But when I let him pass before me, give them names that are sticking and they're appropriate. I need you to know when you're one with God, you'll do the job. You to do, and you'll do it effectively, and you won't fail, amen. Why? Because he's able to keep you from falling and what to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. Adam sat there and named every single beast that came before him. And when God looked on him, he said, Wait a minute, there's, there's no one quite up to him. Uh, what I'm gonna need to do, brother Adam, you've had a long day. How about you take a little nap? 
Praise the Lord. He put Adam to sleep. Amen. The Bible says that he went on and, and caused him to go into deep sleep and he performed that surgery on him. He went into his body and removed one of the ribs and stayed thereof. The King James Version said, Amen. And from that rib, he fashioned a woman. Praise the Lord, somebody. And I'm not picking on anybody. Amen. But that gives us a precept about how relationships on earth are supposed to go. Not picking on anybody. And nobody in the church should ever get like that. One Jesus, one yes, yes. The rest of y'all better repent. What I'm talking about is we get so sedity, we'll start judging people because they're this type of sin or that type of sin. But you're not saying anything about this type of sin. All you're doing is going to the Lord and saying, Lord, have mercy on me. For I acknowledge my transgression against thee and against thee only have I sinned. That thou might be justified when that's, we start to talk good to God when it's our own bad business. Praise the Lord, somebody. But I need somebody here to love the Lord enough to love the people that he died for. Do I got anybody here that's willing to grow and love? God enough to love the people that he died for. He died for the drug. He died, amen, for the homosexual. He died for the poor. He died for the adulterer. He died for the liar. He died for all of us. And we have to have the love of God that passes all understanding, the peace of it that passes all understanding. Why? Because God loved me. In such a way that I can't, I gotta keep it to myself. Come on, somebody. You ain't told your whole testimony. Amen. No, Lord. The Word of God says that in Acts, it was recorded that in Him we live and move and have our being. As I said to you, uh, uh, this this is something that you you see uh, the Lord doing in the church. And then before even the new covenant that we're in, he took care of Adam and presented his wife. And when, when uh, Adam was, was made to look upon his wife, amen, Adam said these words, this is now bone of my bone. He knew where she came from. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Flesh is my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And therefore a man will leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife to the two shall be one flesh. Come on, somebody, help me out here. I haven't been married probably as long as some of y'all. I got, I think 33 years is a decent little run. Praise God, I hope for at least another 33 years if she'll have me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> but uh, what I've learned uh, is that you gel and you mold together. Because when we got married, you know, I had my, my chocolate princess, Amen. And I said, yeah, it's good. In my 20s, amen. I said, it's good. But what, what, what we didn't know was that we were going to have to gel together. Praise the Lord. I'm still talking about the church, about being one. Amen. When you get saved, you, you, you see the glory. You see Michael the Archangel blowing the trumpet and asking you to help him hold it up and blow it. You see all the good stuff. What you don't see, amen, is that along the way, God is going to start working on you and pull the stuff out of you that is not Oh, come on, church. He's going to start pulling stuff out of you that is not pleasing. Praise the Lord. And the word of God says, amen, that if you are his child, he's going to bring correction as often as it needs to happen. I come to tell the saints of Pittsburgh, don't be weary. If God is tightening you up, don't be weary. If the Lord is dealing with your heart, don't become hard-hearted. You want to make it back to Jesus? You're going to have to let him work on you. Amen. He's going to have to work on Pastor Holiday's little fallen areas. Amen. He's going to have to work on me. Amen. Where I come up short. Where, where maybe I didn't think right about somebody. Maybe I talk bad about somebody under my breath. Y'all don't do that just me. I'll put it on me. You ain't never said nothing bad about nobody behind your closed door. Praise the Lord and thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Or just look straight like you don't know what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. But you know that tongue. Come on, somebody. It's not only saying hallelujah and glory to God. Amen. You go home and talk about people. And you know how I know? Because I watch your children. I watch your children. Watch my granddaughter. My granddaughter came home the other day and said, you know, when I get big, I'm going to get the whole ghost like this. 
And so my daughter asked, after she got done, she said, how come you won't get it like that? She said, I'm going to get it like that lady sits beside grandma in church. Uh-huh. And then she said, and when, when, when Papa lays his hands on me, I'm just going to fall back on the floor. They're watching, and guess what? We can learn a lot about what our kids are producing. Praise the Lord. Why? Because they're too innocent to cover up and put them on a facade. They're too innocent to cover up. Amen. And try to put the screw on the bread and all the time, all the time. God's good. They're too innocent. But if we get back to being one, amen, we start saying, Lord, search me and try me. Know my heart. And, and see if there's any wicked way in me. And Lord, lead me. Lead, don't, don't worry about it. Don't lead them. Lead me. Praise the Lord. This is a personal thing. Lead me in the way of everlasting. Because if you lead me in the way of everlasting, I'll do my job that you called me to do. And I'll make it all the way. And I'll be effective for you. Anybody want to be effective for the Lord? I'm going to try to keep going. Y'all know that Satan was the one that introduced the temptation, the first division, when he asked Eve in the garden about the forbidden fruit. Amen? He introduced it and they made a choice. And since that choice, amen, we as a people have been suffering the effects of that separation. Man will always try to get back to God trying to be born again. And I need y'all to listen with me. I'm more than halfway done. I want you to think about this. Without Jesus, what do we do? We go, like the Bible says, we go back like dogs to the vomit. Like, like hogs to the mind. We go back, praise the Lord, somebody. And God has been so good. I don't know about y'all, but I can say my testimony. The Lord delivered me from alcohol. He delivered me from drugs. I'm an age product of that white devil called cocaine. Praise the Lord, somebody. And the Lord delivered me completely out. Didn't have to do no jail time. Thank the Lord. My wife didn't leave me. Praise the Lord. I, I'm a bankrupt. And the Lord saved me out of that. Saved our little house. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Amen. I've got a lot to thank God for. He restored me back in order. Hallelujah to Jesus. He made me one with Him. And once you're one with the Lord, I need to tell y'all something that you probably all already know. But your relationships get much better. Come on, somebody. Your household gets much better. And I dare say, if your households are being challenged right now, somewhere, somehow, something is not. Somewhere, somehow, something is out of order. The, the word of God says that there was a demonic that, that came, amen, and kneeled at the feet of Jesus Christ. Amen. Once he and the disciples had gotten over crossing the body of water. And the Bible says that that, that demonic had worshipped the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen to me. The, the demonic had worshipped the Lord. But the spirits, the devils that were inside of him, praise the Lord, they, they ran out. They said, are you here to torture us ahead of time? Here was a perfect example of a man that is divided. He's not one with his God. He's not one with himself. His mind is all over the place. And I'm starting to speak on serious terms here. We're saying, but we got people with bipolar disorder. Oh, I wish I had it with it. We're saying, praise the Lord, but we got people with multiple personalities. Uh, when I found out that Jesus was my Savior, I would have had his personality. Thank you very kindly. But we, we got people that are in the house of God, but still struggling on medication for anxiety and depression and this and that and the other. When I heard the Lord say, come to me. Or even a neighbor, another lady. That man kneeled before God. The demons cried out, but they had to get evicted. I come to let you know that for us to be one with our God, hallelujah, some things got to get out of our life. Maybe you're not demon possessed. Maybe you're just over us. Because you can't have the Holy Ghost and be possessed of the devil. But he sure will talk at you. He sure will use people to try to discourage you, and you got to be one with God, amen, so that you get away and get with the Lord. And say, Lord, no matter what, I know you're with me. Praise the Lord, I know that it's well. Lot was a perfect example. Even though his family had died, his children had died, his wife had turned her back, praise the Lord, somebody, he had lost his material goods, he still kept his oneness with God. He said, naked, I can't even make it. I will return. Blessed 
be the name of the Lord. He maintains his oneness with God. I come to challenge somebody on this Lord's day. What is your relationship with God? How close are you to being at peace and one with God? Or how far are you? How far are you? Where are you struggling? Because I don't have the answer, but I'll tell you what, the Holy Ghost inside of us is the answer. And I believe the word of God who says, these signs will follow them that. And if anybody believe in the house? Yeah. I believe. And my time, Pastor Lewis, Pastor Long, uh, been a pastor, I guess, 24 years, close to 24, 10 in Harrisburg, be 11 next month, and the other part in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And uh, in my time ministry, one of the greatest miracles I saw was that a man who was brain dead on breathing apparatus and just his life was being artificially sustained. They called the family in to, to say their goodbye before they went on and turned off the machinery. And they asked one of the people, one of my, one of, one of my young people at the church, and they asked them to come and pray. So I went to the doctor and said, Doctor, listen, um, I'm trying to offer a word of comfort to this family. Uh, Realistically, what's, what's his chances? And the doctor said, sir, this is a senior citizen. He's had a stroke and been sitting in the same chair with a stroke for about four or five days. He has less than 1% chance to make it. If he makes it, he'll be a vegetable. I said, okay, thank you, sir. I went back to the family. The news is not good. They said there's about a 1% chance, but that means there's a chance. The machine's going There was no activity. You were reading his blood pressure and all that. All that scary stuff was going on. And I said, we're going to believe God. We're going to trust God against the odds. We're going to believe the Lord even though it doesn't seem like this can happen. And if the Lord takes him, it was his will anyway. So we'll say goodbye, but we're saying in Jesus' name. That's why my sister could stand and say, Mama's been gone for a year, praise the Lord, but, but I've made it out by the help of the Lord. She was able to say goodbye in Jesus' name and in his strength and in his power. It didn't mean there's no tears. It didn't mean there was no suffering. But still, God was able to carry us through. I wish I had a witness. This man we prayed for him. And a week later, Seven days later, he was walking his daughter across the floor, holding her on like this because she graduated college the next week. And he walked her across the aisle like this and talked to her and laughed and lived for years as a result of, of God's power. I come to bring, amen, the attention to those who would dare to believe that God wants us to be one, one with his will, one in the walk, amen, one in our fellowship. Today, with these two uh, congregations come together, it's beautiful in the sight of God. And let us work to maintain this kind of thing. I know that we're in a pandemic. We can observe all the rules and still get God the glory and make the devil turn and let loose some of our families in Pittsburgh and wherever they are found. Those that you've been praying for, there should be a chance. Once we become as one man, pray together. For those of you who won't talk about it, I have grown children. Some of them are not walking with the Lord. Y'all know what that looks like. I've had to help my son walk when he was under the influence of psychedelic drugs. Up steps because he forgot how to walk. My son is about six foot one, about 260 pounds, big dude. And I felt like an ant trying to push along. And I, my heart was breaking because this is my child. Yeah. Amen. I, I took him to the house of God. I got pictures, y'all. Little guy in a suit and a tie, you know, they got that matching ties. Took him to church and was so happy. And what happened? How did the devil get in there? It doesn't matter. The, the truth is that he got in there. And our job is to hold on to the word of life. That we train them in the way that they should go. That when they come to the age when they know they won't depart. It's not too late. If your child is still alive, it's not too late. If your spouse is still alive, it's still not too late. If somebody you love and care for is a walking right, it's still not too late. It might be too hard for you, but if we come up with the church of God and become one with His will, they will come. They will come in and give God the glory. And how you want to bless God on that day should be represented today. 
that was the, was the best thing. Amen. Well, Peter and John came into his presence as they were getting ready to enter the church. Then he, he asked for some money. You know how they do. And he told them, silver gold, I have none. But what I have, you got to be one with God. You have something that they need. Are you hearing me? You have something they need. Me, I have a testimony. If you want to hear God properly, I'll be glad to tell you that. Amen. I have a testimony. I've done a lot of bad things. The Lord has brought me from a mighty long way. Praise the Lord. I got to go. I got the privilege to go on and become a teacher and teach kids with problems. Praise the Lord, somebody. Even though I have a background, amen. The Lord said, I'm still going to use you. I'm going to let you work in the public school system and be an inspiration and teach children. Praise the Lord, somebody. I've been able, amen, to see my family restored. Come on, somebody. I had my niece baptized in the name of the Lord. I was with me that day to baptize Mr. Tony. Her son was baptized a lot of folks in that camp. Praise the Lord. God is able to continue to do what he started. But we've got to be one with his will. So much about being our own individuals. Praise the Lord, somebody. I'm going to close with this. John 17 says this. That Jesus spoke his words in prayer. And now I'm no more in the world. But these, talking about us, are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are, that they may all be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. I pray that they may be one, even as we are one. God wants us to be one, y'all. I want to touch on a little bit of an uncomfortable point before I close and give the rocks back to the angel of this house. You know, people don't like it when you start listening to God and God only. When you listen to the word of God and don't comply, I'm not saying disobey the pastor. I'm saying obey the word of God. Because if your pastor's in line with the word of God, and, amen, and you're in line with the word of God, y'all will hold hands and sin. Praise the Lord, somebody. But if your pastor, and I tell my saints all the time, if I start talking crazy and out the book, please stop following me. I don't want to need nobody else to help but me if that's the way it's going to be. Praise the Lord. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen? We have to be considerate that we struggle. People get jealous when you start doing the will of God. There was an occasion where Jesus healed, and I'm going to close with this, Jesus healed a man, healed a person who had a, a, a sickness spirit. Yes, there's sickness spirits in the world. Not every, not every sickness is a spirit. Let's keep it equal and fair. But there are spirits of sickness in the world. This man was blind and he couldn't talk. And Jesus rebuked the devil out of that man. And he got his sight and he got his ability to speak back. Praise the Lord. But you know what church folks do? They talk back. They say, you know, he's casting them devils out in the name of Satan himself. People talk about his past Lord. Pastor Lewis think he's somebody, you know, he ain't nothing fool with devil himself. I, I would be surprised if you had a little altar somewhere. Talk bad about you because you're doing the will of God. And so Jesus corrected it on the spot. Not that he heard it, but he knew their thoughts. And he said, if Satan is divided, he can't do his part. He can't, he can't do it. Now, I come to ask you, believers, think about that. If Satan can't do his work, if he's divided, how can we? How can two walk together unless we're agreed? Come on, somebody. Two are better than one. What? There's power in being on one accord. The Bible says on the day of Pentecost, they were all 120, men and women, in one accord. That's when the Spirit fell. That's when they prophesied. That's when they spoke in tongues. That's when people on the outside heard the power and identified that there was really a God and they were worshiping Him. What could we do? What could you do? I know you don't think a lot of yourself. Maybe you, you haven't really felt the power. But I challenge you, let's, let's experience this power. 
Let's experience his power. For those who need restored, come and get restored. For those of you who need restoration, come and get restored. Please. I'm not saying you're never going to this altar call. If you need restoration, you don't even have to tell me. Tell me. I used to sit in the church every Sunday when I was trying to get it back together and tell God the same prayer, Lord, I love you, but I'm an alcoholic and I'm a drug addict. And when I leave church today, I probably want to drink. And if I drink enough, I'm going to do drugs. And I don't want to do that. Sitting in the pew like Mother Byford is. Quiet. Nobody knew what I was telling God. But I was telling God my business because I didn't want to bust hell wide open. And I wanted deliverance. And your flesh may not want you to repent, but your spirit does. That's why you've been struggling to sleep well. That's why, come on, somebody. That's why you've been struggling, praise the Lord, to stay focused. That's why you're not as productive as God has called you to be, because you're not one with him. Your bodies may be sick, but I know the Bible says that by his stripes, we are healed. We got to be one with the word. The woman with the issue of blood, past tense. She became one with the thought that if I touch him, he is anointed enough that he doesn't even have to talk to me or look at me. But if I can touch, I don't have to touch him. I can touch the bottommost parts of his garment. There is enough anointing that I will be made of. I wonder if anybody got one kind of face on today. Or maybe you will do it and know who won't. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about he can do it and we don't change our confession. He is able and we don't change our profession. He can do it and we don't give up saying the same thing over and over and over and over again until he do it. Keep laying hands on yourself. Keep on thanking God for the healing. Keep on thanking God for the answered prayer until it comes forth. Amen. Why? Because you want to be one with him. You want to confess what he has said. Pittsburgh, I love you very much. More than a word you say. I love these men of God behind me. They have been given a hard task to pastor in a, in a cold city where there's a lot of demon spirits that keep on people in bondage. But this is the place where you can get broken. This place right here, that place over there I'm betting at, that's where, where devils have to go and lives are changed. Why? Because we are one. With God. Can we stand and I'm going to turn into the hands of the man of God?